Uh, let's go ahead and start the question and answer period. I have to start with Smoothie Shred because that is our family that, that stays with us online. Okay. Only one question so far. Patricia wants to know, is drinking distilled water a good idea? All right, so Patricia from Smoothie Shred wants to know about distilled water. I actually do not like distilled water of all the waters. Uh, I think the best thing you can do is have the water with all the different components in there. So uh, I would say that you should stick with regular water. We've had people heal with tap water. I used to refill my water bottle from the hospital bathrooms and I still reverse my lupus. I know that skeevy to people, uh, but you can use any kind of water. Just make sure you drink your water, but distilled is the bottom of my list. All right, uh, Instagram, I already see questions here. So let me go up to Instagram. This is fun. I like, I like the speed of it. Let's get from the hellos down to a question. All right. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I'm just enjoying the comments. Okay, so Sophie wants to know, can you break down omega-3 from plants versus fish sources? So absolutely. Um, when you're looking at a fish source, you're basically getting direct hit of the DHA and EPA. That was originally studied that showed a lot of benefit to human health, immunity, and brain function, for example. But it's missing the previous component from it, that the alpha-linoleic acid uh, that you would get from flax and chia seeds. Now, of course, in in science, whatever we don't know, we always discount. Like, yeah, it's probably not important. Uh, but what we have found it is, it is very important. Uh, one, it helps your body regulate how much DHA and EPA it makes. Uh, and two, um, there's actually benefits to ALA for brain function, dementia, uh, all sorts of cognitive and probably more that we don't know of. So, uh, so those are the main differences, but there's a lot of differences in the sourcing. So for example, when you have a plant source of omega-3 like flax or chia seeds, and those are really the ones to use because Hemp and walnuts, they have more omega-6 than omega-3. And if we're trying to hyper-nourish omega-3, we want a, pure, a source that is mostly omega-3. So with the flax and chia seeds, uh, you're getting a source that has fiber in it. You're having a source that has lots of different micronutrients. And you're getting a big hit of that omega-3 that you need for your immune system, as well as your nervous system, as well as your metabolism, okay? So it is really, really important for that. And the most important thing is it's effective. So back when we first started working in disease reversal, on me, we thought the only place you could get omega-3 was fish oil. And that's the first thing I used to do is drink fish oil. Uh, and it worked, uh, but one, it's really disgusting. Two, it's not really sustainable uh, when you look at the environment. Uh, and three, you have to deal with other issues like mercury and saturated fat and all sorts of toxicity. You know, they've looked at fish in the, in the ocean and found that they all have environmental pollution that rains down on the ocean from all of our industry. So there's all these different issues that make it a not very palatable source. The one other thing I'll say in terms of results that we've seen is that when people use fish oil, they're more likely to have bleeding issues because omega-3s are a blood thinner, which is good. We want that, it's healthy. But when you overdose in the fish oil, uh, I've seen people have bleeding where they get bruises all over. I had one lady that kept bleeding in her eye. I have not seen that when people use the flax and cheer and their body's able to regulate it on its own. So those are the major differences and I hope that that helps you. But the biggest thing is flax and chia works. It's cheap, it's effective, and it's much more sustainable. All right, and let's go to Facebook. Let's see what's going on in Facebook. Let's see, hmm. All right, if I can see the comments, one second here, let me move over into my Facebook page. Please listen to the whole music while I process the request. All right, Dr. Goldner on Facebook. All right, for some reason I'm not seeing it in the uh, session, so I'm just gonna pull it up on the page here. Here I am, okay. Um, so Elaine, I started hypernourishment since March. I have high potassium in recent blood tests. Um, uh, do I continue or change ingredients? All right, the really important uh, question, Elaine. So uh, hypernourishment, you've got to realize that when we give recommendations to the public, these are general recommendations for people who can handle the recommendations, right? So most people can drink the amount of water I say and eat the amount of greens that I say, and they're going to have wonderful results, wonderful uh, health. But there are some people that have organ issues that can prevent them from being able to start out on a protocol that's as aggressive as other people. People with kidney issues are the primary ones. So when you say that your potassium is up, that rings the alarm bell for me that you are somebody with kidney problems because your kidneys are the ones that filter things like sodium and potassium and water and other electrolytes and helps you maintain that homeostasis that you need. So if you are collecting potassium, that either means you are taking a supplement with potassium, which you should not be doing, 
or that you have some kidney problems. So when people have problems with filtering electrolytes, I very, very strongly encourage you to work with me so I can create the proper dose of hypernourishment for you that your body can handle. I have published reversing end-stage kidney failure. We had three people in our last group who reversed kidney issues. One of them got fired by her nephrologist in our last rapid recovery group she, by phone. She got her blood tests and was going to go in to see her nephrologist and he called and said, don't bother, you don't need me anymore, your kidneys look great. So we we know that our protocol is optimal for kidney health, and we also know that not all kidneys can handle the regular dose. So if you're struggling, number one, switch to all low potassium foods, but number two, make an appointment with me or do rapid recovery with me so I can monitor your levels and help you get the right doses of dosage of nourishment that will optimize your kidney health, reverse your disease, but not overdose you because your kidneys aren't able to handle it, okay? And that's for all people with issues like that. It's very, very important that we get that dosage right and realize not everyone can follow general recommendations. If you're struggling in that way, don't mess with your health, get an appointment so I can help you. Smooth shred. Jury, do you advise most COVID long haulers to make any special adjustments to the goodbye autoimmune protocol? Like for example, having low histamine smoothies or do you apply any strict rules, movement restrictions for any of your clients? I have been very strictly following goodbye autoimmune protocol for two months and I feel no improvement in my brain fog, inner shaking and fatigue. So I switched to low histamine ingredients a few days ago. I was wondering if it is the right thing to do. I read about MCAS activated by histamine or is there anything else I could do to help healing? And who is this again? This is Dory. Hi, Dory. Okay, so first of all, I'm very happy to report that in our rapid recovery programs and in my appointments, every person who's come to us with COVID long haul has recovered from it. And usually very quickly, usually in the first two to three weeks, their symptoms are gone. So we know the protocol is highly effective for that. Uh, so uh, in terms of adjustments to it, not typically. So number one, when you're saying you're doing it at home, uh, and you're not getting results, and I start to wonder, one, are you getting results, but those are the leftover symptoms? Or is it that uh, you're seeing nothing? If those are the leftover symptoms, then that means you keep going, right? So if you're saying that you still have brain fog, but the other issues went away, well, then you are healing and you just keep going, right? If you were saying that, Mm, I don't notice anything, that would be kind of strange to me. So that would be uh, one, I would make sure that you're doing it correctly, uh, which I can't do right now over a Q&A, but that would be one thing is we have to make sure that you're doing it correctly and you're not adding anything or you know using wrong measurements of things. It's very common people make mistakes with the actual application of it. Uh, and number two, if you were doing it perfectly, then I would look at if you're not having changes, do you have some kind of food sensitivity? In which case the changes you made make sense to switch to low histamine. Now the good news is, is even if you don't have a histamine issue, it won't harm you to do it that way. It's just less flavorful, but you'll still be able to get hypernourishment done that way. So I would check in with yourself on that. You know, Make sure that you're getting all of the protocol correctly to the best of your ability. See if you're getting improvements, but just not all the ones that you wanted, uh, in which case that would change what you decide to do. Keep going in the low histamine. And if you're struggling, then then it's time to, to work with me. Uh, you know, we have our, our group for May 20th, sorry, is, has, has been sold out for a while and we have a long wait list, but we do have a group coming up in July. So that's always, you could always give yourself to July to try to figure it out and then move into getting our help that way or make an appointment. Uh, but one way or another, hold on to hope. You can absolutely get yourself back from long COVID. Uh, so just keep us updated on what you're doing. And like I said, if you need more help, reach out. And let's not forget to mention when it comes to brain fog and fatigue, sleep and rest are two of the most obvious but overlooked uh, things that people neglect so make sure that you're getting enough sleep and good quality sleep. That is absolutely true. We have so many people who are like, where's my energy from the smoothie? And they're getting three hours of sleep. So great point and from my brilliant husband. All right, let's move back to Instagram. All right, let's get to the gram. Let's see, scrolling down. Thank you for all your questions here. Let me uh, get to the next person who wrote that. So... All right, let's go to this one here. So Zayunadi, is it true that animal protein is not good and is it harmful for Hashimoto's? So yes, uh, and I'm wondering if you're asking me this question, if you're new to my page or to my program or to me, and if which case, if that's the case, then I'm so happy that you're here. Um, if you wanna learn about how to reverse disease using supermarket foods, the best thing you can do is 
Go to my free classes right now, goodbyelupus.com. I teach the whole protocol, including what makes you sicker. Uh, it's also my book, Goodbye Lupus, but if you wanna learn it for free by listening to me talk about it, go to the classes. But yes, the foods that make you sicker include animal products, and it's ab absolutely true for Hashimoto's. And you know, Hashimoto's is one of the most common autoimmune diseases out there, but it's not treated as autoimmune disease in the Western world. And the reason for that is not because doctors don't know it's autoimmune, but because the thyroid is considered disposable. Uh, we can replace a thyroid with a pill. So doctors will not interfere with the autoimmune disease that causes thyroid problems. They'll just let the thyroid die when it's Hashimoto's, or they will cause it to die in Graves' disease, but they don't do anything to actually reverse the disease. Um, unlike other autoimmune diseases that attack your heart, your kidneys, your lungs, which are very difficult to replace, in which case they'll put you on immunosuppression and send you to a rheumatologist. Uh, we have had extraordinary results in reversing Hashimoto's using the goodbye lupus protocol, goodbye autoimmune disease protocol. Um, so make sure that you learn how to do it. Remove the foods that are making you sick, hypernourish yourself, and your thyroid will become active again. And it's not true what they say. A lot of people will tell you that you can eat meat but don't eat cruciferous vegetables. It's absolutely untrue. I will update the iodine uh, issue. I always stay on top of the research on this. And for someone without Hashimoto's, make sure you get 150 uh, micrograms of iodine a day to support your thyroid health. A lot of people stop taking in iodine when they give up salt and things, which you don't have to do on my protocol. Uh, but if you have Hashimoto's, they found that 300 micrograms a day is the optimal amount, not more, not less. So make sure you also include that with hypernourishment and go after your health and let me know how you do. All right, let's switch over to the Facebook side here. I'm gonna just... All right. All right, I can do this one as a rapid fire here. Dr. G, when you have kidney failure, stage four, can you have salt? Uh, yes, you can, uh, but again, when you've got late stage kidney failure, you're gonna need more oversight because I don't know how much. Uh, I don't know how much water you can tolerate. I don't know how much sodium you can tolerate. I don't know if you have edema. I don't know what medications you're on. So with kidney failure, please work with me so I can oversee what you're doing and optimize all the key nutrients that you need so you can optimize your health and not do anything that's gonna harm you in any way. Smooth shred. Hey Jenny, a, for a healthy person, would you still recommend a higher veggie fat diet versus a higher fruit fat diet? Fruit fat? Is that what it says? That's what it says. Uh, okay, all right. Um, so so uh, there's not really a lot of fruits with fat. They're, I mean, unless you're counting avocado as a fruit, maybe, I guess. Uh, what I would say that in general, for health, uh, I think that- uh, It's fruit slash fat, veggie oh. slash fat. I think she's referring to the fact that we have high omega-3s Oh, okay. So is it fruit versus veggies? Okay, so I'm confused by the questions. Veggies. If it's fruits versus veggies, if you're healthy um, and you're getting in, you know, that your blender of pitcher of hypernourishment a day from our smoothies, you can have unlimited fruit and it's fine. Uh, so if you're healthy and you're getting in your, your greens for the day and you're getting in your handful of omega-3s that we teach in Smoothie Shred and you want to fill in the rest with fruit and you're doing well, that's fine. The only time we restrict that would be uh, for people who are trying to heal faster or or for people who are trying to lose weight faster. Uh, but other than that, um, it doesn't really matter how much fruit you have. There's, there's nothing harmful inherently in fruit. Okay, let's see. Instagram. Oh, Quad Kid wants to know, uh, what's the minimum amount of protein we need to consume a day? And I'll say, yes. <laughs> so basically, you don't need to calculate these things. Um, it is nutrition mythology that has really, really been promoted heavily, especially by industries that make a lot of money off of it, that we need to quantify and calculate and load up on protein. People tell me all the time that their doctors tell them this and their therapists tell them this, that you need more protein to heal faster, all this stuff is entirely not true. And we know this because we've been uh, reversing disease for over a decade using hypernourishment where people are living off of vegetables, omega-3s, water intake, fruits, and of course you're getting protein from all of these things. I mean, a lot of people have calculated the content and it is plenty of protein that people are getting even living off of all of the vegetables, even in the raw forms. But the point is, you don't need to calculate it. There have been vast studies done where they've shown that people who are eating at all, 
get enough protein for life no matter what it is that they eat. But it's the overdose of protein that's caused most diseases, especially protein from animal sources. So overdosing in animal proteins has caused a lot of the epidemics of disease that we see, heart disease, cancer, uh, autoimmune diseases, uh, diabetes, you know, type two diabetes caused by animal fat clogging insulin receptors. So the most important thing you can do for your health is to stop looking at macronutrients like protein, carbs, and fat and start looking at micro micronutrients like vitamins and minerals and omega-3 fatty acids. And when you focus on that, you're going to optimize your health and you don't even need a calculator. All right. Uh, where are we going to next? Facebook. Um, Facebook, Facebook. Okay. Carl, type 2 diabetic with low sodium and high potassium imbalance, still should I hypernourish, kind of lost. So again, Carl, um, if you're having that issue, there's a good chance that the diabetes has affected your kidneys. Because again, your kidneys are your filter. So if you're lost and you don't know what to do, it is the right time to make an appointment with me. Listen, I give free to the public as much as I can uh, because I want to empower everybody to get their health back. But when it's a specific issue like this, it's impossible for me to tell you how much sodium or potassium to eat because I don't. I haven't seen your labs. I don't know your your issues in detail. So yes, hypernourishment is still going to be your goal, but what dosage is going to be hypernourishment for you might be different than the general guidelines. So generally, I'd say you know use low potassium choices for your vegetables and your fruits and your omega-3. So chia is the low potassium source there for folks. Um, make sure you have lab tests regularly so that you don't overdose on potassium or have your water drop too low because that can cause definite and immediate medical issues. And work with me so I can help you get it right. And then you won't be lost and you can get done with this whole health journey and get optimized, okay? All right, Smoothie Shred. Hey, what do you think about doing three at a time for each so you don't have to keep sure. constantly switching? So we'll do three Smoothie Shreds and then we'll do three. For That's each why other he's platform. my manager, go for it. Okay, Chris is asking, uh, I just started Goodbye Lucas Protocol. Is it okay to split a 64 ounce blender of smoothie and eat raw salads the rest of the day? 100% yes. Yeah, you can eat it any way you want. Okay, Chavari, uh, she says that she just, she enrolled for rapid recovery and already sent in their medical history form. What's the next step? Didn't get any reply or any instructions. If, four week or six week? Doesn't say. Okay, the six week group, when you enroll, you are automatically put into our system for the group where you should be getting regular email updates. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and send me a text message uh, so that we can figure out what's going on there, okay? So I'll check it right after the Q&A and make sure that your email address, check your junk mail in the meantime, because you should have gotten like three emails uh, about it. If you enrolled in the four week program, you got an email with my cell phone number saying to text me when you send everything in. So either way, contact me directly so I can do that for you, okay? Okay, and last one, Teresa Jackson. Can a Coumadin user safely eat the greens? Yes, okay, so asking about Coumadin, uh, Coumadin is one medication that actually is affected by or impacted by your diet, and so doctors will often tell you to eat less greens so that they don't have to mess with your medicine dosage. It's actually not the case, because if you want to reverse your disease, you need them, but here's what you need to do, because you do need your blood thinner to work correctly. Number one, you can ask your doctor to put you on a blood thinner that does not require any change in your diet. I took injections when I had blood clots and I could eat whatever I wanted. So that's one thing you can do. The second thing you can do is stay on this blood thinner, but have your uh, doctor check your INR on a regular basis, usually once or twice a week until you get to the dosage where your medicine matches your vegetable intake. A lot of people will get a home INR machine so that they could do that themselves, where they can literally look every day and adjust their medicine dosage based on their greens intake. But you always want to make sure that you're getting the food that you need and then work with the medications so that you can get the help from the medication medications you need while still nourishing yourself. That was three? That's three. All right, great idea. Let's do three from Instagram. Let me scroll back down because it just gets full. All right, let's see here. All right. Looking forward to seeing you, Peyton. Uh, thank you, Videnis. All right, let's see. All right, good kid again, you got in a few times. If you consume flax oil instead of flax seeds, won't you be really short on protein? No, so I see you're obsessing about protein, just let it go, just, you're holding on to it, just whew, let go. You know, I promise you, not one person has ever become protein deficient on our protocol. And I'll tell you a really quick story about this. We had somebody who is a dialysis nutritionist in our previous rapid recovery group, like three groups ago, who had low blood protein levels, and it was because of her inflammation, I told her this, but, I told her to switch to flax oil in the group because she was constipated. 
It took her nine days to listen to me because of this argument. She's a nutritionist. She calculated it and said, I already have low blood protein. If you low, if I take away the flax seeds, I will not get enough protein. After nine days of arguing, she finally just gave in. And at the final meeting, she got her labs back. And not only was her inflammation gone, her blood protein was normal for the first time. So I can tell you for sure, tried, true, and tested, you do not need to worry about that at all. Flax oil is a lot easier for people uh, because it doesn't cause the bloat. You don't get the fiber overdose if you tend to be constipated. It just makes it a lot easier. Your, your smoothie's not as thick. It's just more expensive is the biggest uh, problem most people see in it. Um, uh, Julia, sure. Uh, is fasting safe for 90 days and how to end a fast? This is not my lane. I actually teach people the opposite of fasting, hypernourishment, how to overdose in nutrition to heal your body faster. I am not a faster. Uh, so I don't really have any input on that. Uh, I don't consider fast, a prolonged fast to be safe. I've, I've seen some bad outcomes personally, uh, with clients, but, um, you know, make sure if you do something like that, it's medically supervised. But I have found that people can eat their way to healing. So there's no reason to starve them. And, oh, thanks, Nivea. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, a lot of you just giving me love, so I appreciate that. Um, Amy Ashcott, I've had heart palpitations after drinking smoothies. I'm on thyroid medicine. Why would that be? Well, it might actually be good news. So what we have found is that uh, people with Hashimoto's or low thyroid, uh, especially from autoimmune diseases, they will often have reversal of their symptoms starting at about the three week mark in our rapid recovery program. So in rapid recovery, you're getting oversight every single day, either one-on-one -on -one from me and my four week program, or from my husband Thomas and myself in our six week rapid recovery group. So the people in those programs have the fastest results because we're there every single day, optimizing their sleep, their food, their stress, their thoughts. We're just there with them every single day, right? So in those programs, we have found that people start having improvement in their thyroid function, usually by three weeks. And what that can look like is feeling terrible. If you're taking thyroid medicine and your thyroid starts getting better, you will have symptoms of hyperthyroid, which can be sweating, diarrhea, tachycardia. So usually when people start getting those symptoms, I recommend you get a lab test and call your doctor because it might be time to lower your medication. All right, let's go to a few from the Goodbye Lupus page site. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Andy, I can only afford one of your books. Which should I get? Uh, one, try going to the library. <laughs> you might be able to find some there at the library. Um, but uh, it really depends. So Goodbye Lupus is my book. That's my story of reversing lupus and the six steps to healing with supermarket foods. The second uh, book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, that quickly summarizes the Goodbye Lupus protocol. Uh, but the rest of the book is all of the emotional sides to healing. So for a lot of folks, they know what to do, but they don't do it. Why? So I'm a specialist in depression, anxiety, and trauma. And I found that the majority of what it takes to help people change their diet is not the information on what to do. It's information on how to do it, how to beat addictions and self-sabotage, uh, depression, all of those kind of things. So what I did in Goodbye Autoimmune Disease is I took coaching for my rapid recovery group and I wrote those into chapters. And and then in addition to that, there's dozens and dozens of case studies in reversing many different autoimmune diseases. So if you're looking more for the emotional motivation and the case studies, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease is a good way to go, especially if you watch my free classes so you can get the Goodbye Lupus Protocol that way. Uh, let's see here. Um, Sasekia Lupus and wants to know if there's any supplements that I recommend. So most important thing you can do is is eat the food, right? Uh, that's the most important thing you can do. Your body knows how to break down those nutrients and do cellular repair that you're looking for. Um, but in terms of supplements, the only ones that I recommend across the board uh, would be B12 and D, uh, D3. There are so many people out there that are deficient in D3 and your immune system will not function properly without it. So make sure you test those things and that you take those. Um, there is also a lot of people who benefit very much from probiotics. Uh, the gut bacteria you've got are really good at digesting what you've been feeding it, but they might not like the new stuff. So a good probiotic can be helpful as well. I do have recommendations for my favorite supplements. If you uh, are on Instagram or Facebook and you go to the learn more or the link in my profile, there's a link tree I have there. It's link tree slash goodbye lupus. Um, and that has my Amazon list there. And so my Amazon list is the things I like to use for, um, for those different supplements for people who are looking for that. Uh, so if you're looking for those, check there. The other ones are pretty, uh, 
pretty personalized. I did see someone whose comment kind of went away was asking about L-glutamine. That can be helpful too for people on steroids so they don't lose as much muscle and you can just take that first thing in the morning before you start eating for the day. Um, and let's see here. Um, Amanda, any insight to someone who's had RA or lupus in a flare since COVID-19? Uh, so I'm very sorry to hear that you've been feeling that way. It is not uncommon. Uh, you know, COVID-19 has really allowed us to see what people's reserves were for their immune system, right? So COVID-19 is an extremely aggressive virus. And what it's shown me is that there are some people who were about to get sick, but were holding on and surviving that virus depleted them completely. And then there's others like you who already had autoimmune issues and then that virus took your reserves away as well. But the good news is whether it's COVID-19 or COVID-19 long haul or COVID-19 plus autoimmune diseases, uh, the same protocol has been effective. Lately in our rapid recovery group, we've had a lot of people who either got COVID during the group and they did really well, maybe a little upset stomach and that's it. Uh, and a lot of people with long haul as well as autoimmune diseases and they've all had recoveries. So you really just wanna go all in on the goodbye autoimmune disease protocol, taking care of your emotional health, your sleep uh, and hyper nourishing to the max so that you can really, really let your body repair itself as quickly as possible. And I think I have one more on this side. Uh, do you have smoothie recipes? Shay, yes, we do. If you go to smoothieshred.com, you can get smoothie recipes, smoothie, S-H-R-E-D.com. You can get our recipes. You can get access to our uh, Facebook group that's free for people who want to just support each other. They're over here waiting for their next questions. And um, we also have a lot of videos and support there as well. All right, back to Smoothie Shred. Okay, Shalina asks, she says, as a scientist and looking at the positive reviews, I'm wondering why you have not published more in peer-reviewed journals except for one manuscript. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great question. The biggest reason why is because all day and all night, I am taking care of people who are sick right now. So we have stacks and stacks. You have to understand. So for example, in our rapid recovery group, we now have 60 people at a time reversing all different kinds of diseases. And then we go right into the next one. Um, and then on top of that, I have my four weekers. And then on top of that, I have my appointments. So I am a clinician. And I work full time taking care of people who are sick and helping them get better. So that has been my focus the whole time. And there's always someone else waiting for my help. So, and then when I'm done with my clinical work, I'm in mom mode. So that's been the biggest issue. I do now have a scientist working with me to help prepare these. But even after we published that first one, she's been, uh, she has another case series that she's been shopping around for two years now on uh, a series of women who had lupus and Sjogren's who have remained symptom free for four years or more. And most of the major Major journals are not interested. They're not interested in these things. So we've been trying to branch out to get into more mainstream articles uh, rather than disease reversal or nutrition articles. And that has been a big blockade. Uh, we do have one in the works right now, though, that I'm very excited about uh, that lifestyle medicine is interested in, which is going to be a case series in many, many different diseases, including long haul COVID, so that we can show a big array of disease reversal. So that's going to be our next big project. But yeah, the, we don't have a team of scientists here just working on writing up case studies, or we could probably hire a, what, a crew of, what, 50 people? Also understand <laughs> that journals are a business, just like yes. a magazine, just like a newspaper. It's not a public service that is objective and unbiased. So uh, in order to get into journals, you do have to sell with hot topics and things that the general, the, the general reader base want to read, not so much what needs to be put out in the public. The other thing we see too is a lot of the major journals have said they don't want case series anymore or case studies. They only want um, big, um, big clinical trials. Big clinical trials are funded by drug companies. So it's gotten harder and harder, but we do have someone who's working on it, but it, it will be one at a time because I've got a staffer who's working on that. Uh, but that's why I release so much of it directly to the public because it's faster and it gets to the people who need it faster. Okay, next question is from Zandri. Uh, Hi, Dr. Goldner. What is the maximum amount of fruit that I can have per day on the Goodbye Autoimmune Protocol? I understand the 25% of smoothies, but what about the rest of the day? Is it 25% of fruit in weight uh, or not? I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that. It's actually 25% by volume. If you were to weigh it, it actually comes out almost equal. So if you're going to do 3,000 grams of food, um, then the maximum fruit you would have would be 1,500 of those grams. And that would roughly come out to no more than 25%. That's the math major there. And remember, you only need to limit fruit when you're on the most aggressive form, forms of the protocol. If you're adding hypernourishment, you don't need to. Healing. So perfect. So she, that's right on. Okay, Colette, in regards to flax and chia, is one better than the other? 
Not necessarily, it really just depends on one uh, flavor. So ch flax is more nutty. Chia tends to be thicker. So some people prefer that and some don't. Um, what's on sale. Uh, also, if you are high histamine or uh, if you're on a low histamine diet or if you're on a low potassium diet, you're gonna wanna stick with the chia. All right, that's our three. Let's move back to IG. Instagram, okay. Yes, you can ask questions here, Heidi. Uh, I am, for those of you who are just jumping on and wondering why you're seeing my profile, I'm doing a live Q&A across three different platforms. We're in Smoothie Shrub, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. So I'm doing three questions at a time from each platform to try to help as many people as I can wherever you tend to watch me. So live that is why. Simulcast. It's a live simulcast. Try cast. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, Jen. I still can't seem to get off of protein powders and anything else high in protein like tofu. I seem to get woozy when I don't eat these things. What shall I do? I think, you know, what I say often is people don't necessarily get the cause and effect of things correctly. So, uh, you know, someone is craving chicken, they'll be like, oh, I must need protein. No, you like chicken, right? <laughs> so I don't know what it is that's causing your dizziness. It might just mean you need to eat more. So it might be that, you know, you have your serving of veggies and then you normally add your serving of tofu, whatever. Um, and then when you take the tofu away, you don't add more food to compensate for it. So it might just be that you're getting low blood sugar. The other thing that can happen is sometimes people will go into a detox mode when they finally get rid of anything inflammatory, anything that's not on the hypernourishment protocol, they might have a week or so of feeling kind of dizzy and off or flu-like before they start feeling really, really good. So I would check into those things and see if you can figure it out. It might be you just have to hang in there, but I have a feeling that you're just not eating enough food once you take those other things out. All right. Um, Niharika 300, can you suggest hot food for cold weather? <laughs> well, that, you know, hot food doesn't really have much to do with my healing protocol. Um, you know, I get this message a lot. I just got an email yesterday from someone who's like, my body prefers warm food. Can you tell me warm food for healing? And, uh, and uh, you know, what I said is like, it's not really about what you're craving. It's about what your body needs. So it's not that your body wants warm food for recovery. It's that you're cold and you want to be warm and you find warm food comforting. So there's not necessarily uh, set foods you need to eat that are warm that are going to heal you faster. You should have your cold foods. And that's what I told her is if you want, if you're not doing uh, pure hypernourishment on the goodbye lupus protocol or uh, goodbye autoimmune disease protocol, and you're just adding hypernourishment, have your cold food and then have something warm afterwards, right? As long as it's a plan. If you're trying to reverse your disease, then get warm in other ways. Put on a warm coat, put on some warm socks, have some hot tea uh, and get warm that way. All right. You're welcome, Mauricio. Uh, let's see. Oh, a lot of people asking me about protein. Was that three? We're switching over to the goodbye loop or did you do No, uh, no, I have one more on Instagram here. Um, uh, Biro Buat, <laughs> the names on Instagram. Uh, I had, a, I am prone to kidney stones. Should I stay away from green uh, leafy vegetables? All right. So the most common cause of kidney stones is actually dehydration and high meat intake. So what they found in studies is that people who eat more vegetables tend to have less kidney stones, not more. Now, if you tend to have kidney stones for biological reasons, either you're, you're uh, deficient in an enzyme or you've had gastric bypass or something else that makes it so, uh, then you do want to stay away from spinach. But other than that, you can still eat the other vegetables and keep your water intake high, and that's a good idea. Okay. Um, one more on Instagram, then I'll go to uh, Facebook. So, is it possible to reverse antiphospholipid syndrome? My lupus is in remission, but those antibodies are so high, I'm afraid of blood clots. They say there's nothing I can do. Yes, you can. I reversed my anti-cardiolipid antibody, which is antiphospholipid syndrome, 16 years ago. And I still took my shots every day for a year because we were all terrified, but I've been off them for 15 and I've never had a relapse. We've had people reverse antiphospholipid antibody syndrome in our rapid recovery group, usually before the group ends, five weeks, six weeks in. So I would say go all in if you haven't yet and let's kick the rest of this out of your body. As long as the antibodies are coming down, you are getting better because antibodies, as long as you don't replace them, will die off on their own time. But yes, keep the faith and don't listen to those who don't have experience in disease reversal. You can absolutely reverse this. Okay, Facebook. Um, let's see. All right, Arlene's husband had a stroke and the doctor said that it was a dissection that could have happened to anyone, uh, but you wanna know if the protocol can help him. Yes, I mean, when you're looking at uh, nutrition, I mean, first of all, I'm sorry that your husband suffered that way and I hope he's recovering all right. Um, I definitely would recommend that you stay away from anything that can cause clogging of any arteries or inflammation. So meat and dairy processed foods and using our protocol can really help. We actually, I once, uh, this past year, 
had someone who did my rapid recovery protocol. Um, and three days after he started with me, he had a stroke, obviously not from the protocol, but from what was already happening to him. And he decided to keep going. And when he went to see his doctor a week later, he said the amount of healing that had happened in his brain looked like someone that was already six months out, not somebody who was a week out. He could not believe how rapidly his brain was recovering. So that was a really, really stunning thing to see that happen in real time. So I would strongly suggest you do that for your husband and hopefully he's feeling well soon. Do you, uh, Caitlin wants to know, do you have any uh, experience healing mood disorders? Um, my mom has a theory that autoimmune can cause mood disorders. Uh, well, I don't know that autoimmune can cause mood disorders, but they definitely have a relationship with each other. People with, um, depression and anxiety tend to have higher rates of inflammation in their blood, which can then be more linked to autoimmune diseases. So they're definitely linked. Whether or not there's a cause and effect is a totally different thing. Uh, but um, yes, I, you know, my background is also in psychiatry and working with people with trauma and mood disorders. So I absolutely help people with both. That's why my book, Go Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, is so focused on emotional health and how that relates to disease and recovery. And one more, um, Marlena, my 14-year-old has inflammation in her face. She's been to an allergist and dermatologist. We need help, how do we get an appointment with you? If you go to goodbylupus.com and click with the area that says work with Dr. G, you can make an appointment with me. And for those of you who click on it and go, what? I can't get an appointment for months. There is an option that you can do. I'm sorry, I am very booked, but there's an option you can do where you can click a rush add-on. And if you do that, I will add more time to my schedule and get you in within six weeks. That's the best I can do, folks. Um, okay, smoothie shred. Okay, Karen asks, after disease reversal in all negative labs, is it likely for your labs to turn positive again, specifically the ANA, if you continue hypernourishing on a mostly anti-inflammatory diet with some inflammatory foods? So for the folks who follow my advice on the step down uh, from pure hypernourishment into maintenance mode, then there is no expectation that it should return. The people that I've seen who've gotten themselves sick again, it's usually because of a few things. One, as soon as they felt better, they started eating junk again. They went, oh, it's gone. And you know, the paint didn't dry yet. You know, they just barely got there and they undid it a bit and then they were able to go back and finish. Others, it's because when they started adding cooked food or even inflammatory foods, they stopped doing their smoothies and raw foods. And so they gave up on the foods that were helping them stay well and started causing more inflammation again. Uh, but for the folks, I mean, like the case series I was just talking about that we have been trying to get published, I have people who have been healthy for uh, many, many years. I mean, David, who was my first uh, telemedicine client, I mean, we're talking more than 10 years uh, that he's been symptom-free and off all medicines for lupus, Sjogren's, and scleroderma. So um, if you follow the advice, and really, truly, if you used our protocol to reverse your disease, I don't want you looking forward to adding back junk. Keep going with what works for you. Eat a plant-based diet, enjoy your smoothies, and enjoy living your life. And if a year from now you're still feeling great and you want to occasionally have something that's junky, try it out here and there. But really make your goal about the life you want to live rather than how quickly you can get back to the junk. Kathy asks, will smoothies reverse lymphedema? Lymphedema, I don't, I don't have a case study in mind for just purely lymphedema. I mean, we've definitely had folks in our group who had that in addition to other issues have, who have shown that their lymph has gone down. Um, but I don't know if we have someone, it doesn't ring a bell to me, do you, Tom, that someone purely with lymphedema uh, that came in for that reason? And Ashrita, she says, I'm a petite woman, woman. I'm five foot and 46 kilograms. I eat 312 grams of spinach. 200 grams of cabbage, which is about 500 grams of high nutrient veggies daily. That's all I can eat in a day. Is that good enough quantity for recovery? Well, it depends on your results. If you're getting better, then yes. <laughs> if you're not getting better, um, then maybe not. It also depends though, how, what, do you, what else are you eating? Are you getting enough omega-3s? Are you getting enough water intake? So base it off of your results. That's how you know the next step. I think that's three, right? That's three. Instagram, all right. Uh, let's go to Instagram. And again, I'm, I'm going between three different uh, live feeds at the same time, so I apologize for my profile. Um, all right, heaven's delight, I've been diagnosed with gastritis. Nothing is helping. Started green smoothies, but it's making the pain worse. Not sure what to do, the meds do not help. Oh, gastritis is such a terrible pain. Uh, I know because I dealt with it for a long time, especially during my residency um, before I got myself super healthy. Uh, so. When it comes to gastritis, what I found to be effective, oftentimes you do need some kind of medicine because you have basically rug burn 
inside of your gut and, and, and your stomach and your throat, and it hurts. It burns really badly when even healthy food slides past it, right? Um, so I have found, uh, if you can talk to your doctor about it, there's a medicine called sucrophate that I have found to be extremely effective for helping people heal those wounds. It doesn't absorb into the body and it just coats the throat and the stomach and leaves a nice coating around it. So then when you put food in, it doesn't burn you. Um, and I have found that that has helped people recover from GERD and reflux faster than anything else because again, you're protecting it. It's like putting a bandage around the rug burn so it doesn't touch anything. Then the other thing that you can do is really look at your food choices. So I had someone who just did rapid recovery with me for four weeks who had really such bad reflux that it was closing things down and she could barely eat at all. It was burning in her stomach, gastritis and esophagitis. And when she first started with me, she could eat two to four ounces of greens in a day. And by 11 days, she was eating 16 ounces. And at the end of four weeks, she was doing 24 ounces a day. And what we found worked for her was getting rid of the fruit. That if we did the greens, uh, blended with avocado and flax oil, that that didn't cause any burning and she was able to nourish herself and she got so nourished that her body was able to heal these things and then she was able to start adding some fruit back at the end. So that's another way that you could try to do that, uh, especially if you don't have the medical support uh, to do that at the time. So there's one. Aw, uh, thank you, thank you for all your kind words. Um, all right, I already answered this one. <laughs> Diana Bananas, you are everywhere. Right now, I am everywhere. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Okay, Casey, if you've already had an appointment with me and you want another one, I sent you my cell phone number, text me and I'll help you get in and I'll bypass all the rigmarole for you, okay? Um, Big blend, big blend uh, two questions. With raw vegan diet, what kind of foods are you eating to actually consume calories? And a quick one, thoughts on tofu. Uh, so. All the foods have calories in them, but again, nutrition mythology, you do not need to look at macronutrients and you do not need to count calories. Please look at my Instagram and see the big one with the red stop sign where it says, stop counting calories. I explain why they do not matter. Nourish yourself properly and you will feel good. I mean, can you imagine before we invented the science of nutrition that people had to somehow count calories to be able to eat well? No, it doesn't make any sense. You just walk around like, ooh, there's a tree, there's an apple. Ooh, look, there's a carrot. You know, like we didn't, we have to let all that stuff go. It doesn't work. All right, but hypernourishment does. So make sure you do that. As far as tofu, tofu is a great food. It's gotten a lot of bad press and I don't know who it offended to get it. Uh, but tofu is not processed. It actually is a healthy food. And it is, for those of you who just will not believe me about protein, it is the plant food with the highest protein source. Uh, so soybeans or edamame and tofu are, uh, unlike other beans, are actually more protein. Uh, the other beans are more carbohydrate, but anyway, I've already told you that doesn't matter, but I know some of you need it anyway. Um, but what I have found is that for many people, they can do hypernourishment plus tofu and do really, really well. I was able to do that 16 years ago when I got healthy. The reason I don't include it in my most aggressive programs anymore is because some people do have soy allergies or sensitivities, especially if they didn't grow up eating it, and it's not necessary for recovery. So I don't use it uh, when I have to work with people to get them healthy as quickly as possible because it's not necessary and it could cause a confounding factor if they're allergic. Um, but for many people, they can include it and do really well. All right. All right, Bonnie Dunes, you've developed vitiligo since 2020 when you were already doing the protocol. My suggestion is that we do it more aggressively and make sure you do it right. I had a, uh, a young girl who's nine who did rapid recovery with me for four weeks with vitiligo. And by the end of four weeks, she got repigmenting around her lips and around her forehead. So, and I've actually gotten fan mail from people who did it on their own and were able to get repigmenting back. So if you are getting vitiligo, be careful. It's not because of smoothies. <laughs> They don't cause that, but it's because of other factors that are still causing inflammation. So other things that you're eating, not optimizing the smoothies or other stressors in your life, like emotional stress, sleep. So if we optimize all the areas, you're gonna optimize your ability to actually attack that vitiligo and get healthy. And if you're struggling, just work with me. I'll help you figure out how to do it correctly, okay? Do not give up. All right, uh, Facebook. Um, let's see. Kisti, I get urticaria and joint pain even when I'm taking my smoothie. I take wheat bread once in a while. Okay, so it's really important to know the, um, how, do I, how do I say this? Just adding a smoothie to your diet is going to add nourishment, which is good for your health, 
but it won't necessarily stop everything in its tracks that's that's giving you symptoms, especially not right away. So if you are saying that you've added the smoothies and you're still having symptoms, then the next step would be, how do I remove things that could be contributing to the symptoms like eating bread, right? Or are there other factors like not getting enough sleep or stress, or am I not, could I have more of the hypernourishment? So um, if you have remaining symptoms, then you wanna keep going. And if you have urticaria, is it because of inflammation or is it because of allergy? I don't know, because I don't know you. But because of allergy, then you might wanna check into your ingredients, okay? Um, let's see here. Um, I already answered a question about burning stomach, uh, Teresa, so I'm gonna go past this one. Uh, Rachel, how do you feel about coffee with liver problems? So Rachel, I don't really have a feeling about these things. Uh, what I found in general, I mean, I don't know what liver problems you need, but I can tell you that uh, our hypernourishment protocol, especially the good by autoimmune disease protocol, uh, does work for liver inf inflammation and, and uh, reverse high liver enzymes. So, you know, when you're looking at, the, the thing about hypernourishment is it's not specific to disease, it's specific to cellular repair and activating the anti-inflammatory immune system. So that really helps with all different organ systems. As far as coffee, I've never tested with coffee and without coffee specifically for the liver, but most people do uh, like having a cup of coffee even when they're in our programs. Uh, as long as there's no sugar or dairy, they usually do fine. So I don't have more info about your specific issues, so I can't really add more. Um, and Merwa, hello. How long do kidney patients have to do raw? So when it comes to reversing kidney disease, um, you would continue doing the full pure hypernourishment program until either your kidneys are normal or until you hit a plateau where no matter what other idea we have, we can't get another point back out of your kidney function. So if that's the maximum we can get for your kidney function, then you would keep the hypernourishment, maybe add back some plant foods. But if you're below normal levels when you're trying to maintain, you never add back inflammatory foods. You just decide that you are in recovery and you do not eat junk. Uh, but check in with me, Marua, because we can make sure that you've done everything you can. You have my number, you can always ask me directly. Anyone who's ever worked with me, you always get my cell phone number, so you never have to wait your turn on a Q&A. You can just ask me directly through my phone. Um, all right, I think that's three, so back to Smoothie Shred. Uh, this is from Jennifer. Would the protocol be the same for a 12-year-old boy? The nutrition will be the same. The dosage might be different depending on his size. Kathy, uh, thank you for doing this. If I only eat salad, cooked vegetables, raw vegetables, and rice and beans, quinoa, the water, flax seeds, no meat, no oils except olive oil, no dairy. Will I see improvements? I don't know because one, I don't know what you have. Uh, and uh, so that's the most important thing, right? So for some people, especially people who are not very sick, just taking out the bad stuff, which you did most of, you're still eating rice and some olive oil, but um, if you got rid of meat and dairy and you add in hypernourishment and other plant foods, that might be enough, especially for minor issues or diabetes, things like that, right? Now, uh, if you are very sick, there's a good chance it won't be enough and you have to be more aggressive. But we're very results oriented. So I would say if you did that and you feel great, then yes. Uh, if you don't, then it's time to really start getting more focused on your recovery and taking out the stuff that's, that's not helping you with that. She has Sjogren's. Yeah, uh, with Sjogren's, Sjogren's is a pretty aggressive illness. And so we've had our most uh, profound results with Sjogren's with people in rapid recovery, because we really need to attack everything. We gotta get their moods nice and even, their sleep optimal. We often need to go more aggressively on hypernourishment, especially water and omega-3. So uh, I would say most likely that won't be enough. Okay, this is from Tiffany. Does the water in the smoothie count toward the 96 to one gallon of water a day? Yes, it does. The water you put in the smoothie counts. And that was a quick one. Let's just do one more. Uh, Christina, is it possible to eliminate chronic infection of EBV MCV? Yes. So I actually am not a big fan of all of the um, blood tests people are getting for EBV. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's been a big push, and I don't really know where it comes from, but I've seen it. I was just reading someone writing about that the other day, that they think all autoimmune diseases come from infections. I have not seen any evidence to show that. Um, for example, the EBV idea, Epstein-Barr virus, came out when I was in college, and I was so excited. I'm like, is that the cause? And I got my blood test done, and I had it, but then it turned out everybody has it, even people without autoimmune. So I don't really think that's very interesting, but what we have found is people who come to us who have EBV in addition to other symptoms, they get better. So that's all that matters. Okay. 
All right, Instagram, you've patiently waited. Um, Mario5, I have a daughter that's on dialysis with lupus. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I have worked with people on dialysis and helped them improve. So I, I, would, I had somebody recently in a group who started urinating again for the first time in a very long time, uh, halfway through our group. So it's always a good thing to do. Although again, we have to be very careful with nourishing people with broken kidneys. Um, let me see, Sheena, Sheena Livent. Can a whole food plant-based diet in a one-year-old cause neutrophil levels to be below 500 and it be normal? Uh, so yes, uh, what I would say is in general, when people are on a very, very low inflammation diet like the one that I teach, your white blood count, including your neutrophils, can be lower than normal and it is normal. So the most important thing is that the person is healthy, right? Because you could have a low white count because of autoimmune disease hurting your bone marrow. You can have a low white count because of cancer and you can have a low white count because you are healthier than a normal person. So many people who've done my most aggressive programs will have lower than normal white counts, including neutrophils, because their immune system is not reacting to all the inflammation in the diet. It only reacts to what it needs to. And by the way, in somebody who's healthy, uh, it's not that they can't fight infections. They fight infections better than people with chronically elevated numbers. So it is very possible, but I'd be very uh, curious to find out his health in general. And I'm guessing if the kid is on a plant-based diet, the health is really good. All right, Moon Revival, cool name. I'm currently pregnant and reversing my lupus successfully with your protocol. Yes. Uh, do I need to have a high risk doctor or could I have a regular OB? How do you feel about taking baby aspirin? So I love when people reverse their disease while pregnant. Just be careful, that child is going to be really amazing. Uh, all the Green Hulk babies we've seen, they are so smart and active and healthy, they're kind of difficult to run after. So it's a good problem. Um, I'm glad you're doing well reversing your disease. Uh, in terms of a high-risk doctor, I would leave that up to you. I know when I got pregnant the first time, my OBGYN insisted I see high risk. They refused to follow me. so. I went back to her, but I was willing to do whatever they said to keep my baby safe, it didn't matter. So um, so the second one, she didn't even bother. But you can just talk to your doctor about it. It's not like it hurts you to have a higher level of care or people looking after you. Um, and with baby aspirin, again, talk to your doctor. If you're someone who tends to clot, that might be something that, that can be beneficial for you. So just work with your doctor on that. And I hope you have a really healthy pregnancy. Um, I think I got one more here. Oh, thanks, Molly. I love my son too. Uh, let's see. Um, what kind of water filter could you use, Carla? Uh, we just use regular water filters. Most of the time we just use the one in our fridge. We just got a water machine. I don't know what kind of filter does that have. I don't know. It's one of those regular machines where you just put a cup under and get water out of it. Mostly because I didn't like the taste of the tap water here. I'm picky about flavor. New Yorkers. Um, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Most tap water is actually pretty filtered and, and works just fine. All right. Facebook side. Um, let's see. All right. So Andrea, Ferritin is a thousand plus. Hi, uh, I've been following hyper nourishing for two weeks. I still feel exhausted. Any recommendations for foods to eat or avoid? Uh, has this diet shown symptoms in lowering iron in the body? Um, and symptoms. So one, uh, adding hypernourishment is a great thing to do, but it might not be enough for your issues. So it might be that you just need to focus more and more on your hypernourishment and getting those uh, nutrients in at a higher level uh, before you start feeling all those breakthroughs. Uh, two weeks is not very long doing it on your own. It's a lot more doing it with us, right? Um, so keep going with that. Number two, make sure you're sleeping. Um, you can feel very tired and foggy because you're not getting enough sleep uh, or because you're highly stressed out as well. So all of those things you can work on. It has helped people with elevated ferritin. Um, if you have low iron, I still recommend people follow their doctor's recommendations for taking it because uh, you need iron for blood. Uh, but it has helped people with all those issues. All right, um, best ingredients to add in a smoothie for vitamin D deficiency from Aliza. Uh, vitamin D does not come from food. The only foods that have vitamin D in it are foods that somebody added vitamins too. It doesn't happen naturally in food. It's actually a hormone that you're supposed to develop through uh, interaction from your body in the sun and none of us get enough sun to do it. So unless you're adding your vitamin D drops to your smoothie, uh, you're gonna take those separately. And one more here. Do you have a popular raw dressing for salads and trying to find something good? Uh, yes, absolutely. If you're in our Smoothie Shred Facebook group, uh, I have an almond Caesar dressing that I really love. And if you wanna do it uh, without nuts for the more aggressive goodbye autoimmune protocol, you can switch out an avocado, but it's just avocado, um, mustard, um, uh, Bragg's aminos, 
and uh, lemon juice, water, nutritional yeast, garlic, salt. <laughs> I don't think I ever go a day without garlic. All right. So uh, Mar Marina, hi, Dr. Goldner. Did you ever have a patient that your protocol couldn't really help? If so, what's the approximate percentage of people that didn't respond to the protocol? Thanks. Uh, sure. It's, it's not common that people, let me say it this way. If you add our protocol to your life, you're going to get healthier. It's not physiologically possible for you not to get healthier. But there was someone who, he came to me with kidney failure. Uh, he had one kidney and his kidney was um, poisoned by a toxic reaction to a dye in a CT scan. So he, his wife and him wanted him to do rapid recovery. Um, and I actually, his wife's a doctor. And I told her, I said, I don't think, my, I don't think it's going to make any difference because his kidney was poisoned. It's not autoimmune. It's not working at all. Um, and she just wanted to do it anyway. She said, you know, I'd rather him work with you and see if we can get any back. We have no expectations. It didn't work. His blood pressure was better. His skin was glowing. He felt good energy, but that kidney was dead to the world and, and there was nothing we could do about it. Um, so there are gonna be situations like that where it's not autoimmune, it's not inflammatory, and we're not gonna be able to help. Um, other situations like that would be usually things like in a rapid recovery group where someone will have a recovery of all different symptoms except for one, and then we're able to determine that that one is not inflammatory. Uh, like we had someone in our last group, all these other autoimmune system, uh, issues got better, but her knee still hurt, and we realized the knee was actually because of a muscular dysfunction, which my husband was able to figure out because he's the master of the human body with the musculature and how it interacts with joints. So sometimes it'll be other issues like that that are non-inflammatory, but it is a safe thing to do that is going to improve the health of your cells and your immune system because that is what your cells use this nutrition for. Faith asks, is there ever any issues with the smoothies for someone without a gallbladder? Will I still be able to get as much nutrition with my foods? So if you don't have a gallbladder, you can absolutely do our protocol. In fact, a lot of people get their gallbladder out and can still do it fine. Realize that you're still able to make liver enzymes. You just don't have a storage pouch anymore. So if you have trouble digesting fats because you don't have a gallbladder, you just separate out your smoothies throughout the day, either sip them all day long or set them out every hour, two hours or so, so that you have time to replenish your liver enzymes. All right, and Christian, can epilepsy and seizures be reversed by strictly following the protocol? Actually, yes. Uh, we've had people reversed uh, brain lupus uh, that was causing seizures. Within a week, she wasn't having seizures anymore. And someone with epilepsy actually did Thomas's program because he was trying to get fit. And his uh, year, he'd had seizures for years and they went away. There's a testimonial about that uh, on one of our sites. But the really interesting thing is many years later, he decided to add meat back and his seizures came back within a couple weeks. So it proved that that was really what was keeping those seizures away. All right, Instagram, we'll just do a little bit more here. This is fun, all right. Um, okay. And Smoothie Shred, that's probably gonna be the last ones we're gonna be able to take. We have three minutes left. All right, uh, Rooney, can this help reverse or heal IJ nephropathy? Yes, I've worked with people with IJ nephropathy that have had great results in rapid recovery. Um, let's see, I'm gonna try to run through. Um, have you ever worked with people with Mulder Lyme patients, Gwyn Designs? Absolutely, in fact, we have some testimonials live. Uh, there's Maria who had it, uh, there's Becky who had it. We've had a lot of people who've had great results with Lyme. Uh, mold, you're probably, well, you have to get rid of the source of mold for sure. Um, Nivea, reversed all my symptoms due to this protocol, it works. Yes, it does, thanks for saying that. Uh, Maria, can you drink coffee with lupus? Yes, you can, just don't use sugar or milk. All right, so that's Instagram. Let's finish up on Facebook. All right, um, Sarah, could your, uh, could your protocol help with vaccine damage and then it just left? While it's extremely rare, uh, unfortunately, I've treated a lot of people with COVID and long haul COVID. I've had, I think, three that have had some kind of vaccine um, side effect, but those folks did get better. Uh, neuropathy for uh, was the main one that I saw and they were able to recover. So uh, yes, absolutely we have. Um, let's see. Okay, so Linda wants to know if there's modifications if you have autoimmune and Lyme uh, EBV, but also systemic yeast. I would cut the fruit out to maybe just berries and do a candida protocol on top of that. Um, and Maureen, I'm new. Where do I find the individual protocols? Thank you. Well, welcome, Maureen. Uh, if you go to goodbyelupus.com and click the uh, free gifts, that'll help you get started. Also, if you go to goodbyelupus.com today, you can still watch my free classes where I teach the whole protocol for free. So if you want about four more hours of this, that'd be where you go. So welcome. And there's also recipes and everything there. Um, and let's see. 
Okay, Crudy, I've been doing the program for six to eight months with hair vitamins and vitamin D, but I still have a lot of hair fall. What else to add? So it really depends on the reason for that. Hair fall is a very complex issue. I've actually done some videos about that because it is extremely complicated. Listen, hypernourishment is best for hair health, skin health. Uh, I can tell you as a walking billboard for hair that will not stop growing. <laughs> All right. It is really good. And, and when people do our protocols, usually that's what happens is baby hairs start to form and everything fills out. But hair fall can be from damage that could be months earlier from stress or COVID. Um, also, it can be from hypothyroid. So one of the things I see that has been causing hair fall in people is they learn from other people to stop having salt. And salt was their source of iodine. And without iodine, thyroid function falls. So if you're not taking your daily iodine, make sure you're getting at least 150 micrograms a day because that could be what's causing the ongoing issue. All right. Well, that was it. This was really fun. I just did a three-way simultaneous broadcast of Q&A. And I hope all of you guys have gotten a lot of help and support. Uh, it is always my honor and pleasure to serve the public. Um, listen, it is Lupus Awareness Month. And nobody's more aware of what lupus and autoimmune disease can do to your body and to your life than I am. And also what I know is that there is a path to recovery. So wherever you are right now, whatever you're doing right now, remember it is still the perfect day to do more for your health, okay? You have the power to make this better for yourself, but you have to take action. So if you haven't watched the classes yet and you want it for free, do it today, okay? If you have more questions, if you wanna learn more, we have so much out there. So many people have sent me messages that just going to my classes and watching all of my social media worked to reverse their diseases completely and they never paid me a cent, they never even met me. So make sure you're doing everything that you can. And if you still need more help, then use me. All right, go to goodbyelupus.com. Let's figure out a way to work together. But just whatever you do, do something. This is your life and you're the one that's responsible for taking care of yourself and taking it back. So sending you so much love out in Smoothie Shred and Instagram and Facebook. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you soon, as soon as I can do this again. All right, right. Well, let I'll me know how you like this. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye everybody.